Hi everyone, my name's Tam. Welcome to um, Behind the Scenes in this week's studio session at the Emporium. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the Jia Jia Rang, on whose land we meet, share, work and create. I am so excited to be here today. I have got some uh, gorgeous people that are here to talk about behind the scenes, reveal the world of behind the scenes, a world that we hardly ever get to um, check out. But my name's Tam. I am the host of uh, the studio sessions for this season. Um, and I run a creative enterprise called Create Business. And I love talking to awesome people and finding out what, the, what they do. Hi, Susie Luke, how are you? Good, thanks, Tam, how are you? I'm good. Now, Susie is joining us from the Bendigo Art Gallery. Um, and also we have Ben Van Dillen. Hey, Ben. Hi, how are you going? I am good. Um, ben is from um, the DeLong, is it the Performing Arts Centre? Uh, it's just the Arts Centre now. They the Arts Centre. used to be the Performing Arts Centre at one point. Okay. Um, well, welcome, Ben. But uh, Ben has recently uh, moved to Geelong, which is a bit sad for Bendigo. Ben was with Arena Theatre. Shout out to the Arena Theatre crew. Um, I am uh, also going to welcome our Facebook viewers. Um, you know, this chat is here for you and for our community and, and to bring us together and, um, you know, really make our creative um, opportunities thrive because there's so much going on out there. And if you have got a question um, for our guests you'd like to ask, please pop it in our chat. We'd really, really love to hear from you. Um, we'd also love to know a bit about your creative enterprise. If you've got a social media um, link or a tag, pop it in there too so we can uh, check out what you do. The Emporium Creative Hub is all about um, building community between creatives, even though it's closed because of the dreaded COVID at the moment. Um, but, you know, studio sessions is all about um, you know, bringing us together and building our practice. And we have got someone saying, hey there. Hey, Emma. Um, good to hear from you. Looking forward to uh, hearing from more people in our audience. So, I'm going to spend the first bit of our session together just talking about uh, what is behind the scenes in a creative industry and how do you get a job in um, the creative industry um, behind the scenes. And um, Ben, uh, congratulations on your position. And I'm not quite sure. I know that you're an experienced in production and a technician. Uh, which, are, you know, are kind of different things. Um, what's your new job with, with the Geelong Art Centre? So my new job with the Geelong Art Centre is I'm the Technical Operations Manager. So essentially what that means is um, if you think about the makeup of a, of a technical team, you've got your technicians that you meet on a daily basis. They're the ones that, um, you know, operate the sound, the lighting, rig things. Uh, meet with the clients, uh, the ones that if you've ever been backstage at any theatre, even if it's just a school musical that you did, they're the ones that you see running around in black. Then on top of that, you've got um, your different heads of departments. So you've got your heads, head mechanists who mechanists look after the sets and um, the stage and the construction. You've got your lighting department, which look up, looks after your lighting and um, vision and different things. You've got your audio department who are pretty self-explanatory. They run all the speakers and whatnot. Then you'll also have your wardrobe department and a few other different uh, different stage management and other different areas. Um, my job is to basically oversee all of those departments. So I've got, my heads of, I've got my heads of department and they run their little bits and pieces. And um, I basically make sure that they have what they need and the experience they need to be able to do their jobs effectively. Wow, that sounds like mind blowing. So Is that? It's <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds really um, huge. And then yeah. like, 
especially in theater, because anything can happen in theater. Um, so, and it also like, that sounds like a really, really big team. So at Arena Theatre, did you have such an enormous team? How, was that? How did that work? No, Arena, Arena Theatre, so for the last few years I've worked with Arena and um, Circus, uh, Circus Oz, who are two totally different size companies, Circus Oz being quite a large company. So at Circus Oz, I worked as a touring production manager. My job there was to basically get the shows all around the world. So when the shows would be created and they want to put it on in Perth or... Um, Spain or wherever they want to put it on. My job was to help the show get developed, uh, build it, and then actually get it out on the road, make sure the freight and everything worked well. Um, when I was at that company, I, when we're on tour, I would have, um, I would oversee a head of lighting, a head of sound, um, a head of rigging who would sort of have their own departments. And then on top of that, um, the different acrobats and performers and uh, stage management. At Arena, it's the same kind of idea, but a lot smaller. So I didn't have to look after any staff, um, except for the, the few times when maybe, you know, we would bring in the odd staff member here and there, but it would just be on like a gig to gig basis. But yeah, compared to Geelong Arts Centre and uh, Circus Oz compared to Arena Theatre, uh, yeah, very different levels. So I gave up a relaxing job for a stressful one. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound um, it does sound really complex. And, you know, I think the word circus, I think that word yeah. describes it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining. Yeah. So how the heck, how, the, how did you end up like, you know, running a circus, Ben? Um years of working my way up through different positions. I actually started as a trainee. I did a traineeship at the Capitol in Bendigo. Um, oh, really? when I was at, yeah, when I was oh, at high that's school. Awesome. And that was the only theatre that was really in town. Okay. And um, it was relatively small at that point. So I, yeah, I did a traineeship a couple of days of school, a couple of days a week I went to school, a couple of days a week I worked at the theatre. Okay. And then, do um, they still have traineeships? They do, they do. It's um, it's something that, uh, uh, like the Arts Centre put on two trainees every year. This is the Arts Centre in Melbourne, um, and that's oh, a two-year program. Uh -huh. So, um, and that, like, that's had really, some really good successes out of that. Um, there's a few different other places. I believe the Opera House still puts them on. I know, um, I think Townsville had a trainee when we're up there, but you still find the odd theatre. Um, mm. In the time that I was at uh, Capital Venue, well now Bendigo Venues and Events, we had, yeah, we had a trainee for two years while we were there and he still works in the industry and um, mm -hmm. yeah, so they, they still do. Um, obviously the other way that people go is down the university path, mm. which is, yeah, you know, go to NIDA or Whopper or, you know, BCA and do your course and then come out and, you know, try and find your career from there. Uh, me, yeah, I did the traineeship. I ended up sort of stepping aside from theatre a little bit and I worked at um, Crown Casino in Melbourne in the Palladium. Just, and that's sort of where I kind of cut my teeth a little bit in moving lights and a few different things and uh, and then started. And then from there, I was able to sort of freelance into theatre, worked at a range of different venues around Melbourne and yeah. Then it just sort of continued on from there. I ended up on cruise ships at one point, working in um, out of America. Uh, yeah, uh, worked for the opera, and uh, yeah, just sort of slowly worked my way up. <laughs> wow, um, that's that. You know, your 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 skills behind the scene have really taken you around the world, haven't they? Literally. Yeah. The other thing that makes me think. Who have you met? Like, who's the, you know, have you met, like, the your favourite Hollywood star or anything behind the scenes? Um, yeah, well, I've, like, I've definitely met, like, a lot of the uh, shows that we've worked on. I've worked on shows with, um, obviously, like, your Jeffrey Rushes, um, um, those, like, your, quite a few sort of, like, obviously, Australian theatre artists, um, when I was working in Canada for a while there, we did sort of more of the bigger shows. So it was more like live music. So, you know, we all met people like Usher, the 
performer and um, actually um, when I did a, uh, what's his name? No, I can't think of the guy. Sorry, make a blank. <laughs> um, Justin Bieber, that was the guy. Just oh, a, Justin an Bieber. Canadian singer. Yeah, actually, uh, while I was loading out his show, I fell through his stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, you know, we did, and you do sort of get to meet people, but it's, it's not like you work, depending on what sort of job you do. Like, I don't, like, being in production and being in the technical side, I'm not necessarily working closely with these people. It's not like I'm seeing them on a day-to-day -day basis. I might be working on their show, but... You know, it's it's sort of a different thing. It's not when you're there, you're sort of all there doing your your own job. Like technicians are just as proud of their art form as the person that's performing on stage. And mm. designers are just as proud. And when you're on those gigs, you know, if you're working there as a lighting programmer, it doesn't really matter who's on stage. You're more interested in how the design's gonna look and how and the art that you're creating and the passion that you have in that, not necessarily all I'm doing this because, you know, um, whoever is performing, like, it doesn't matter if it's a, yeah, it doesn't matter really how high level the show is, it just, you know, it varies. Yeah, um, that, that's great. I love how you're describing what you're doing behind the scenes as um, an art form and a profession. Um, and I can mm. imagine that within that profession, there really is, um, you know, an understanding of what, what good is and what isn't good or, you know, people who inspire you and, and um, yeah. uh, are, you know, pushing things forward. Um, I'm just wondering, Susie, with your work, your, your work is, um, you know, behind the scenes is, is very much about the audience experience and um, opening up pathways for them to engage with other people's creative practice. What's your role at the Bendigo Art Gallery? Um, so I'm called the Public Programs and Learning Officer. So I look after programs and events um, and education and all the volunteers here at the gallery. So kind of my job's um, the, I work a lot with um, my Benzol team now over at BVA, Bendigo Venue and Events. So I kind of do this, my part's kind of setting up the um, event or the program, like communicating with the artist, inviting, um, planning it, and, you know, then getting in touch with, say, um, the team at BVA and, um, setting it all up, how it would go online, like working with technicians and working with curators to see how best to write up um, scripts and um, really like kind of look after and nurture the, the artist or the speaker to, so that, um, you know, they feel comfortable or, or if they're doing a workshop and how we kind of, I work really closely with them um, our marketing officer here, Mark, so that we can really engage our audience. So you look at all your different um, types of audiences, like you've got your families, your adults. Okay, you know, yeah. Um, you know, like different people in the community. And um, so, yeah, and then you start planning, like, a lot in advance. And then when, it, when COVID hits, you go, yeah, let's put everything online. Uh -huh. <laughs> then would know. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> You're still really busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, you're you're really the one who's like um, making uh, like a, a workshop happen, or perhaps a talk or a tour, um, oh, yeah. and everyone turns up and has a you know a fabulous time and and learns something new or discovers something new about the world. Yeah, that's right. So it kind of all, it's all encompassed, it's all under the learn um, kind of title because um, no matter what age we are, who we are, we're always learning. And it's really mm. about complementing the exhibition that's on. And, um, you know, especially like it's right up here in Bendigo region because there's opportunities that people wouldn't get in the cities. So if you're inviting an artist from 
um, somewhere else, you know, there's this beautiful opportunity that you can give to people in regional areas. And then you've got all your Melbourne people coming up as well, which is which is awesome. And it, open up again. It'll yes, it will be lovely. <laughs> I look forward so much to doing all those things. But um, I think we have got, you've got like a little sort of tour to put us all on right now to check out behind the yeah. scenes of the art gallery. I remember the first time I went behind the scenes of the art gallery and I felt, you know, I just was going to a special, amazing hidden place. I was just so curious to, you know, check it all out. The other side yeah. in the gallery is very different. Yeah, it's pretty special. And as, as we were talking about, it takes, you know, a team of brilliant technicians and collection managers and curators to set everything up to get the paintwork right and, you know, the designers and everything. So would you like me to share that? Yeah, that I'd, love to, yeah I'd love to have a look. look through. Um, and if anyone out there is on Facebook, please say hello. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to also know about your creative practice and questions for uh, Susie and Ben as we get to know their behind the scenes work. I'm having trouble, so sorry. I'm having trouble finding the um, one on my screen now. Mm -hmm. We might have to ask our behind the scenes person to help us out. Lyndon. Are you there, would Lyndon? That, <laughs> would that be all right? Sorry. That's okay. That's that's why we have behind the scenes people. Okay, looks like Lyndon's got us going. Beautiful. Thanks, Lyndon. You can go to the next slide. So basically, that's just a picture of my desk. It's really messy and it's just like, just got time frames on it really, like when I've got things due in like events and kind of programming in seasons with the exhibitions. We can go to the next. So this is upstairs. So this is the upstairs office space in the gallery. That first picture there you can see, um, if you go into those kind of panels um, to the left, that's where all our curators sit. And then further closer um, up, that's where me and my team sit, um, the education officers. And then they've up in the top right hand corner you can see our tiny kitchen where there's um, only allowed two people in it at a time right now with COVID. And then down the bottom there is um, as where um, some of our collections, our technician guys um, sit in there um, and like that's just where their computer space is, where we we can start creating, that we can use this space for cutting up things. Um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Thanks, Linda. So now we're going downstairs. We can go to the next slide. This is um, an exhibition that's on right now. Like a lot of our exhibitions are installed and we film them to put them online. But this is, um, this is, if you're coming in from the front entrance and going through what we call Gallery One, this is um, where the burning world is. And that little doorway up the back, that will take, that kind of gives you a, an image of, right, that's where the gallery is. And now we're going into back of house. Um, this, is, this is always interesting. This is Gallery One, what we call Gallery One. This is where the Ross Taylor exhibition um, has just been deinstalled. So that that kind of process between a deinstall and install is, is always really fascinating to me. Like the how quickly the techs get in there and repaint everything, get everything ready for the next hang is like extremely fast and they're so professional, they're so incredible. 
Thanks, Linda, and we can go to the next. Oh, again, we're going, um, that's just a bit, little bit more um, closer. This is if we go through that door to um, Burning World and if we turn, if we turn um, right. So this is where we are back of house. So this is where we store all our furniture. We, when COVID happened, we had to take all our furniture out to get the gallery reopened. Um, to the right, you can see this is um, all my area and my team's area. This is all, which I always love. I love education, I love art um, resources and materials. So we can go to the next slide. Thanks, Lyndon. So beautiful art supplies for programs. It's always really exciting just um, getting in there to art supplies, as um, many art teachers would know. And this is as we're going through back of house. Now we're going into the really interesting part where um, like we all our cabinets are kept, um, like containers, like lots of materials from um, from different exhibitions. We've also got another off-site um, place. This is the loading dock. I always love loading docks. They're always really interesting. I love those great big doors that you can see up the back. So this is where big exhibitions come bumping in. Um, that great, that blue floor down the bottom there that can rise up and down. Thanks, Lyndon. Um, also in the loading dock, we have areas for fabrication, so carpentry. So when um, labels, um, um, other cabinets, other um, um, plinths need to be built. Um, this is, um, again, the technicians and the fabrication teams. They're incredible. And go to the next. That's the stairwell that goes down to where we hold all our collections and then like basically back of house up to um, where the, all the offices spaces are. Thanks, Linda. And basically this is where we kind of um, end. Like this is the, I haven't got access to this part, I'm sorry, but this is the where we go into this great big lift. It's one, it's massive. You go downstairs and this is where all the collections are in our collections area. Um, the other really interesting thing is about um, with any museums and galleries is the temperatures. That, so the air conditioning systems um, that you might find that you have different um, different temperatures in different rooms, different lightings for, say, paper and canvas and, you know, um, and different objects as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much. It's um, so good to uh, yeah, get in behind the scenes um, and we've got some people having a bit of a chat with us. So, hi to, um, I've got, Hope, is it? He really or she really enjoyed getting in behind the scenes. Um, and I, yes, I did didn't mention when we first went live that um, the Emporium did have a, a mentoring program um, open, Emma. I believe it closed yesterday. I'm afraid, but your business idea sounds really intriguing. And sometimes uh, you've just got to you know, give it a go and start at the, at the start. Susie, for you, like starting your career um, behind the scenes and, you know, working out what your passion was and, and um, you know, did you always know you were going to work in an art gallery? Did you always know you were going to, you know, work with audiences? How did, how did that all evolve for you? Um, I, I grew up in a really artistic family where we were like we were always drawing always encouraged and um really encouraged with education as well so my background's more in education but I I waitressed heaps like growing okay. up uni and you know 
just um, meeting lots of different artists and musicians and going to lots of events. And then a friend of mine and I, we actually started organising our own, like, running events um, to raise money for different charities that we really believed in, like um, women at risk, like domestic violence in regional areas and kids that um, were being abused. So we hold lots of get our friends together, um, do gigs, that kind of thing. Um, and I learned a lot, like, because I'd get my mates that were techs, my mates that were musicians, like all of artists, you know, that was kind of how... You are a natural organiser. I did things back in the 90s. <laughs> there wasn't much going on because I, you know, grew up in Ballarat. Like we just all <laughs> together as a little yeah. as a little thing. And um, but then when um, like I worked in the disability field, like lots of social areas, and then got into education, worked with um, councils on holiday programs. BCAL, then primary teaching, and then I got a job with the museum, um, driving a dinosaur van around <laughs> regional Victoria. Oh my God! Um, <laughs> dino shows. To I kids. haven't heard that story before, Susie. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. It was really good. It was it was really hard being um, away for a week though, oh, like. Yeah. On and, and everything, but it was amazing experience. I've, I've learned so much about dinosaurs that um, it's still in there somewhere. <laughs> and then I just kind of, as Ben said, I kind of, I got different jobs and different, I got a job at Immigration Museum as a program officer. And then I started doing events, running events. Then I went to Science Works. For two years, then I got a job at Melbourne Museum doing top designs and loads of really big events for the last five years that gave me incredible, you know, amount of experience working with a whole array of, um, as you say, back of house and behind the scenes people, like, that was incredible. And then fortunately I got a job here at Bendigo Art Gallery and I love work, but the fact that now I just get exposed to art as opposed to not, not I miss the sciences, but, um, you know, I'm, um, it's, it's a whole new learning curve, really, yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I love how, you know, really it sounds like your career started just because um, you know, you, you, you had this desire and drive to make something happen, but clearly, um, you know, organising things and people and making experiences happen are important for you. You get, yeah. you get a lot of energy out of that, do you think? Yeah, that's really wonderful. Yeah, that's really good. Um, for me, especially working with artists and community members for in First Nations and, um, you know, that's really, and having it, as you say, Tam, making it really meaningful and meaningful engagement. Um, having the events and programs work beautifully, like that everyone gets along and, you know, for like when things don't go as well as you hoped or you didn't get that, you know, the amount of people that you'd like or you have to put on another event because it was so popular that the team, like everyone, is working really well together and it's a nice experience. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit like you, Susie. I'm very much an organiser and I love um, making things happen and just, you know, creating space or doing something that might not normally happen or bringing people or you know um, businesses or industry together that might not normally interact and just you know seeing what blossoms then um i know your career path started with uh, a traineeship which 
I I'm like all for traineeships, like that hands on hands on learning, and obviously you landed on something you loved as well, because because now you're the head of you know all these people doing this awesome stuff. Got a few questions that have come in. Um, wondering what, how do you, how do you like get a traineeship? Um, and you know, if you are interested in traineeship, who do you, who do you contact? How do you make that um, happen? I think the the best way to do it is to become is just to be proactive and find your local venue, hound them, annoy them, um, work out ways that you can. Um, you know, kind of get them on side. It's traineeships these days are, are kind of a funny thing where apart from the arts centre, which they do um, every year, you know, you can put in an application, you can find it through their website. Apart from okay. them in Victoria, most of the other venues, I think it's more, they don't necessarily go looking for it. Like people don't have those programs there and some theatres, it's like a lot of businesses just put it in a too hard box. And if you're waiting for them to come to you, that's probably not going to happen. Where if you go to them and you find out what you need to do, do you need to get an RTO? Do you need, you know, who is that RTO? Right. What, what what do you yeah. need to do to make it happen? You're more than likely, you've got more of a chance of them actually coming on board and, um, and helping you with it. Like I imagine the gallery would be the same. Like, I don't know, do you guys do training programs there? At the gallery, sorry. Yeah. Was that um no we haven't yeah it's more we really encourage work experience um mm -hmm. and um but no we're working with the city of greater bendigo to get more traineeships um yep. Yep. in the future um yeah yeah and when COVID kind of like this um you know we can kind of go there with it within the regulations as well mm -hmm. restrictions sorry yeah mm. yeah that's that's exciting is is do you have um traineeships in in uh in your work ben do you have someone uh we don't at the family? moment but i know that the well actually uh, just as i was leaving arena they put a trainee on so arena yeah, company company has one now. and um that position is more it's, a, it's sort of a bit of everything but like obviously arena produce shows so they create uh they create and produce so that rolls a bit more it's probably going to end up being a bit more sort of around administration as opposed to say technical traineeship where you're okay. physically working on the job um, yeah. but then i guess that's the thing you've got to sort of decide what what you want to do like it's you know, you can get a taste for everything. If you want to get into the technical side, yeah, you, you want to try and get in with a theatre. But then, yeah, like if you want to be, if you want to learn how to be a producer, well, I'm sure there's, uh, like producers and production managers, those sorts of roles tend to, not a, not a lot of people go to university and do a course to get one of those senior roles. You tend to work into those roles from different um, disciplines. And mm. I think there's a, yeah, there's, there's a lot to be said for if you wanted to go into talking to a company like Arena or local, or not local, but to professional theatre companies that, yeah, there might be options through there too if that's the sort of area you want to go to. Yeah. It's sort of almost like a trade, isn't it? Or It, um, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, and, then also, and that passing like, of skills. Yeah, and there's like there's nothing wrong with university. Like there's a lot of universities out there that um, are doing, you know, a, a lot of great things and uh, getting a lot of people into the industry. Um, it's it's a competitive industry, like most. Like entertainment's a really small industry compared to um, a lot of others. Like, like so you know, plumbing. it's very, very sorry. Like plumbing. Yeah, yeah, like plumbing. Yeah, if you, if you want a job, become a plumber. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is. It, it's one of those things that it does take a. Like you're not going to come out of university and walk straight into a full time, cushy job. Like you're going to end up working gig to gig, festival to festival, tour to tour, and that's how generally for a lot of people how it goes. And if you're willing to do that and do the hard yards, then yeah, you you will 
it's people, you know, people hire who they trust, who they know are going to do a good job, and you find the same people get hired over and over again. Mm, that's right. Mm. It really is um, a certain sort of grit or persistence or passion mm. and determination to um, establish yourself within the creative industries, not only as someone who's, you know, making the art that's on show, but someone who is um, behind the scenes. Mm. It, really is, it really is challenging. Susie, and did you do any... Oh, sorry. What were you going to say then? Say, at the moment, um, it's obviously a really hard time for live entertainment because... Mm our industry basically got washed out by the by the pandemic. And um, I think in the next few years when the theatres start reopening and, you know, it starts to come back alive, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like I know a lot of um, co-workers and colleagues of mine have, you know, used this as their excuse to get out of the industry and go and do something else. So, yeah, right. you know, there might be more jobs that have opened up there may be more opportunities that maybe weren't there before. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I suppose that was kind of um, thinking about, um, you know, your, your work, Susie. Did you do um, formal qualifications or did you do, like, you know, obviously you made stuff happen in your, you know, social group to start exploring what you like doing and what you'd like to do in your life? Did you do volunteering? Did you have a mentor? Like, how did, how did that unfold? Um. I did a Bachelor of Arts at uni and then did a teaching degree. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I think... And then after teaching um, primary school for a little while, um, I um, decided that, um, yeah, I got a job at the museum as I said and I guess I guess my mentors were really there at the mu at the museum I guess like past managers mm -hmm. and um, just especially really incredible presenters that were really funny okay. like, yeah. like um, an artist and everything that you know were um, were, kind of, were more like mentors, like the like I always had mentors when I was teaching and that, but um, those really, the people that could really engage you and um, inspire you were, I worked with a, an incredible array of people. So, and um, it was always really good when you worked with people that weren't competitive, <laughs> if that makes sense, with programming and events and art and, art activities with kids um so what does that mean like yeah ha having working with someone not with, with a, not competitive competitive does mean like that you sort of come together and everyone tries to be the best they can be or yeah and sharing ideas and kind of like leaving your ego at the door you know okay. I think like and you know because as we were saying earlier there's nothing more beautiful than seeing, you know, a little kid do a drawing and drawing with them. And, you know, like that's where my heart really sings with art, you know, like doing art with kids and coming up with a really, um, um, you know, gorgeous program that when you see it, um, when you see the kids do do that program do, or do that activity, it's really delightful because they change it and they make a robot out of it or something or they do something completely different, you know. So that's really, really beautiful. And then, you know, to see um, adults engage in events that you wouldn't normally, like like the surprise element, I guess, is really, is really um, rewarding, a rewarding part of the job too, yeah. Well, I guess that's what you get with people, isn't it? You never know what's going to happen next. I know that must be a big part of your job, Ben. And, and right now, um, you know, with the Geelong Art Centre, you're going through a build. Mm -hmm. And, yes. um, you know, you're in such an exciting space where you're getting to make decisions about, you know, what how that theatre might operate, 
and uh, and what sort of fittings it might have. And that's going to like really impact what people can do in there for like decades. Um, and, you know, it must be so exciting. Tell me a bit about what you're getting to do right now. Yeah, it is. It's um, So the project itself is uh, the Geelong Arts Centre has been going through a three-stage redevelopment since about 2010. So stage two has just been complete, which was building four studio spaces. So one of them's large enough that you can do live shows and we're currently using that for our live streaming. Okay. Um, and then the other three are more like rehearsal spaces, like uh, you can do ballet training in there. They've got ballet bars and they're set up for dance. They've got sprung floors in them. Um, and then below that, there's a level that has what they're calling the creative hub which is basically just a big open plan office. Um, but the idea is, is it's open to people um, in Geelong who um, are basically artists that just need a space to work. So they've got the studios that they can use along with just having a desk and a printer and, you know, tea and coffee facilities available. There's Sounds meeting so rooms awesome. there, all of those sorts of things. Um, and, and below that's where they've got like the bars and the... Um, uh, entrance to the Playhouse, which is a, the well, almost largest theatre at the moment. The Playhouse is about an 800 seat Presidium Arch Theatre. And then they've also, they um, manage Costa Hall for Deakin, which is a little bit bigger. Um, the stage three is the back of the building um, is about to get demolished. So that's got a small theatre wow. in it at the minute. Um, they're going to demolish that and the Barwon Health building next door. So that all begins at the end of this year. And then we're going to revamp that into, um, once again, multiple spaces that can all all do do different things. And they're going to be very, very multi-purpose sort of spaces. So um, there will be theatres, but there will be the ability to do lots of really interesting things in there. Like we could put galleries, um, exhibitions in them. You could put um festivals in them you could put all sorts of different things and uh yeah you're right it is at this moment we're still finalizing the plan so i can't really go into much detail about it but it is yeah it is it is interesting looking at um looking at each one of the spaces and just trying to imagine what it would be used for like if you build a space with too many limitations that you can't really use it for multiple things and it becomes a very you know one like you know like the capital theater is a great example you can use that as a theater but there's not much else you can do with that space where if you look at say the foyer of alumbra you could do heaps of things in there you could put on dinners you could have you know concerts in there you could host weddings you can put on wine shows you can use it as a gallery space and it's that sort of those sorts of concepts where you look at it and go well that's great but if we don't have enough power in there, well, then they can't use it. Or if we've got no ability for them to hang on the walls, then they can't use this, they can't use it for that. Um, and it's just yeah, looking at the spaces and just thinking, okay, let's dream up here what they could get used for, and then try and put in the infrastructure now that at some point they could. Yeah, I love it. And it yeah. It's, it's fun. <laughs> it, it sounds like fun, um, but it makes me think for, for both of you, you're both really, you know, even though your jobs are quite different, um, you're both really in a place where there is a lot of imagining hmm. um, and, you know, big ideas and then thinking through, well, to do this, I need the, the and, and these things go together. Lots of, you know, big thinking and problem solving. Um where where are you getting your ideas from? Like how are you and and that you've got sort of lots of technical needs as well. How how are you sustaining that? How how's that all coming together? Well, I guess for me it's more um, not necessarily coming up with the ideas. I just like being able to make other people's ideas happen. And I think like that's where my career's kind of been. Like when I worked for the arena around production management. You would have the, um, basically, they'd come up with a show, for example, the artistic director, and they would say, this, we're going to produce this show. And we'll get some lighting designers in, and we'll get some set, set designers in, and we'll get some sound designers in, and whatever we need. And they design, they come up with all these great ideas. 
but then it's about how do we physically get that to happen set designers come up with a set great how do, who, who builds that set how do we build it once we've built it how do we transport it uh how do we move these things around how do we and that's i guess that's where for me it's sort of yeah there is a bit of creativity but it's still for me it's a bit more logical than you know like the you know i guess the logical side of it of okay well the, the idea is amazing we're going to build this set that's going to you know float six feet above the ground that's fantastic um but how do we do it and how do we move it from place to place yeah. or does it move from place to place or can it you know yeah. um and then trying to come up like solve those problems more so than imagining what color the set's going to be mm, that 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 sounds like fun and um you know i imagine no day is the same for you um susie uh, I, yeah i think you're kind of in the same sort of space where you, you in a way have got um, an exhibition or perhaps there you know the space is being used for an event or a, a performance and you kind of extend that like how do you get into a space of you know thinking through that or you know get inspiration or know when you've hit the right idea or the right event or you know whatever's happening um it's a light bulb kind of, moment yeah it's kind of like a, 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 um for us you know every every exhibition's different like the paintings different the design um and then but yeah i've i've learned so much from text like i go around a room and i look for the powerpoints you know that's kind of my first thing that i do um to like think where can i put the bar where can i put the if I get a you know, nail girl in, you know, like where can I put them? Like where can I do an activation? Um, where okay. can people sit and draw? Uh -huh. where, where can they drink? Where can they? Is that maybe understanding the constraints or the like the framework yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And kind of making it like a different atmosphere for each event as okay. well. Yeah. Too. So, um, but. But you're right. There's there's always this planning time, like where the big ideas happen. You know, what are we going to do? When is that going to happen? And then you kind of start nutting it down. And that's really the you know when people that work in exhibitions, like the curators, and that they get to have to nut all of that out. But they're always really good brainstorming sessions where you get everyone involved and then you just nut it all out then you start planning it out and then you have to go through the fine tuning mm. as well and um yeah but for my job it's you know the exhibitions are in play so i've just got to work with the team we all get together and say this would be good this would be great this would be good um you know holiday program this would be great adult event you know and that and then then i start working through it and getting in contact with people and then i to make it to, to deliver it i then i work with the text and marketing and so you're working it's good you're working with a lot of a lot of people yeah mm. yeah you need to have good people around you to make sure they turn up and you know do what they said they're going to do um it sounds like as well, both of you maybe have got in situations where you are working with a team or there's competing ideas or you have to pitch your idea and you're pretty damn sure that you've got the right idea. And how do you do that? How do you like, you know, bring, you know, not only navigate these spaces and technical problems, but, you know, people, how's, how's that going for you? Any tips? Collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the same. And also, too, you, you just don't get attached to ideas. Like mm. with COVID especially, I've had to cancel and reprogram so many things. And my biggest concern was trying to keep my artists that I had booked and ha or, ha or make it a little bit different, you know, um, because I wanted them to be, you know, to, to be paid and to, mm, be, you know, yeah. to be able to... Um, so we could deliver something but um yeah you, you just be really adaptable and just keep moving mm. the next idea the next if you, if you get really caught up with oh my, my idea wasn't you'll like 
you, you'll be, it, it's not very healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's really can. good to be creative and flexible as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find if, um, you know, you do take on someone else's idea and call back them, quite often you learn something new or discover Absolutely. something you never thought of. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, it also sounds like to me that uh, your job sounds like maybe you drink a lot of coffee or, you know, <laughs> that there's a lot of like, okay, we've done this, now we've got to do that. Like it's just this continual, like the show must go on and happen and you've got to like be there and do it. Are you like, do you get exhausted? How do you keep your energy up or do you just like love it? I think you have to love it yeah you wouldn't go into entertainment if you didn't like it like we work in the arts no one's here for the money uh, so uh -huh. i think you are i think you i think you have to really enjoy what you're doing um like you know a standard bump in day for a circus show for example we'll get to the venue at you know between 7 30 and 8 a.m and um you know i'd leave the venue once the lighting focus was finished and that would be 10 30 11 at night and that's your first day and you do three days of that before you'd start the show and we do that every week in a different city and that's sort of you've just got to you've just got to enjoy it and um yeah you know you're going to work long you're going to work hard um and i think the like i've never really worked in any industry except for entertainment and um I think the one thing that you really do get out of it is when you see an opening night and the audience is there and they're loving the show and they're loving the performance and or they're they're walking around the festival or whatever it is that you've worked on you do get a bit of a buzz from it like it is great seeing other people really appreciate your work i'm not sure if accountants get the same feeling <laughs> of, but, <laughs> you know it does well uh, maybe if you get a tax return back and it's like awesome <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um maybe but uh yeah maybe they are it, yeah you do you do have long days but then you know um that also like it's not like we're doing ridiculous hours all week because then later in the week you're doing show calls so you might not start work until six o'clock at night and you're done by 11. so mm -hmm. yeah so it's sort of it all balances itself out and that's and that is that is a real hard aspect of the job too is that um working in like when i worked for the circus for example i'd spend nearly six months a year on the road and trying to balance that and yeah you sort of have to get into the industry you're going to miss people's birthdays you're going to miss christmases you're going to miss funerals you're going to miss all of those things and and that's just part of it and if you if you're not willing to to kind of go down that path then yeah it is it is you know, it's a tough industry to be in. It is tough and, um, yes, a lot of admiration and I'm so glad that you're doing it. Um, what about you, Susie? How I know you must be desperately missing all that energy and hype and stuck behind a screen talking to people. Are you, is, you know, having that buzz and, oh, my gosh, is this going to work? Feeling like, are you addicted to that? um yeah I guess, I, I guess in a way it's always really exciting to move on to the next thing like mm. you really relish when it works really well and then like as you say the next day you're like oh right now now it's the next one yeah <laughs> but it's it's always really nice to um you know we always try to do a little bit of a debrief about something like about our events and then but it's 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 um that pace is really good because for, for like here at the Bendigo Art Gallery like the the beauty of of how the exhibitions are planned and how they're you know kind of set up um it gives you this beautiful time frame to be able to get you know everything um kind of well, this is this week and then this is this week. Whereas I guess for me, 
I'm kind of the opposite to Ben. I've kind of come from this really like, right, get it done now, get that done, get that done at the museum. Oh. You know, which like, like we, you know, we're really used to a rapid response, you know, get it down on the floor now, you know, or we've got an event tomorrow, you know, plus looking after all your education groups and, you know, getting everything done. So I was kind of really used to that, that pace and, you know, then coming here, it's, it's a different, it's a different pace. It's still really intense and lots of work because you're in a little team. Um, um, but it's really rich and meaningful and yeah. Yeah, but it's moving to next the next one because you're always learning something new. Yeah. Um, I've got so many other questions that I wanted to ask you both and, and, and uh, wonder about, but it's been so good having you both here. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedules and the things that you're organising and making happen and time away from your, um, you know, your team which probably are like your family, really, aren't they? From time to time, depends on where you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, all the best for, um, you know, Geelong Band. We're going to miss you in Thank Bendigo, you. but I know you are destined for awesome things. Thank you. And thank you so much, Susie. No, oh, thanks, Tam. Thanks I hope for being get to see time. each other in Love person you. soon. Yeah. And thank you also to the people who joined us um, today. It was really lovely to have you. Um, another way you can get involved in the community at the Forum Creative Hub is to join their um, community Facebook page, which I think you'll find at the top of their feed. Um, and uh, next week we are talking about uh, how to get uh, your creative um, enterprise off the ground. Emma, that might be a good one for you. I'm talking to some amazing people who worked out what their passion is and then set up a business. Absolutely adore what they're doing. Thanks again, Susie and Ben. Thanks, Tam. Thank you. Thanks, Tam. Thanks, Thanks Linda. Best.